The 1960s was a decade that saw a tremendous amount of societal, cultural, political, and technological changes. It was a particularly groundbreaking time for the world of television. During this era, social factors played a role in the decline of more traditional, family-friendly programming that viewers were used to, but that trend wasn't quite as reflected in the ratings as it would be in the 70s. The swinging 60s were an era that embraced a willful departure from orthodoxy. At the same time, many viewers still clung to the sensibilities and values held dear in the 50s. Join Facts First as we take a look at the most watched TV shows in this trailblazing and highly influential decade. 1960 Gunsmoke this classic Western series dominated the airwaves for the last three years of the 50s, clinching the coveted number one ranking in the Nielsen rating system. Westerns continued to be popular in the first half of the 60s, and likewise, so did Gunsmoke. The series was set in and around the town of Dodge City, Kansas during the 1870s. It was the era in which the American West was being established by settlers. The series' main character was Marshal Matt Dillon, played by James Arness. Dillon was tasked with upholding the law in the Wild West town, where people would often display very little respect for authority. He dealt with a multitude of different problems pertaining to frontier life on a daily basis, from gunfights to cattle rustling to saloon brawls and land feuds. These difficult situations often called for him to display outstanding braveness while maintaining sound judgment. Fortunately, Marshall Dillon was well-versed in both of these qualities. While Gunsmoke ran for 20 seasons from 1955 to 75, it lost its top dog rating position in 1962 to another influential Western series. 1961 Wagon Train This western aired on NBC from 1957 to 62 before hopping over to ABC for another three years. The series often featured big-name guest stars who appeared in fairly significant roles as settlers along the trail or as travelers in the large wagon train the series was named for. It was inspired by the 1950 film Wagon Master, as well as the early widescreen 1930 film The Big Trail, which starred John Wayne in its leading role. The show chronicled the adventures of the titular wagon train as it made its way from St. Joseph, Missouri to Sacramento, California, while passing through the Midwestern Plains and the Rockies. Throughout the epic journey, the travelers that made up this caravan faced many trials, tribulations, and personal dramas. 1962-63 The Beverly Hillbillies this series, with an ensemble cast, ran on CBS from 1962 to 71 and featured the performances of Buddy Epson, Irene Ryan, Donna Douglas, and Max Bayer Jr. as the Clampets. The family was an impoverished, backwoods, somewhat stereotypical family from the hills of the Ozarks who, after striking oil on their land, moved to the more affluent and posh Beverly Hills. The Beverly Hillbillies ranked in the top 20 most-watched shows on TV for eight of its nine seasons and ranked as number one for its first two during its run it amassed seven Emmy nods and has been rerun in syndication ever since its cancellation. Despite being received well with audiences and scoring high marks with the ratings, the series was given the axe in 1971 after being on the air for 274 episodes. CBS received pressure at the time to ditch their lineup of rural-themed programming to instead focus more on modern, sophisticated urban themes. This action was later dubbed The Rural Purge. Pat Buttram, the actor who played Mr. Haney on Green Acres, one of the Beverly Hills Billy's spin-off series famously said that 1971 was when CBS canceled everything with a tree. 1964-66 Bonanza the mid-60s were essentially the last years that the viewing public still craved westerns. After this three-year stretch, westerns no longer had the same kind of appeal, but they didn't entirely disappear either. Bonanza was broadcast on NBC between 1959 to 73, although it enjoyed its largest audience during the mid-60s. It was set in the 1860s and revolved around the rich Cartwright family who lived near Virginia City, Nevada, on the border of Lake Tahoe. The title of the series came from a term that miners would use to describe large deposits of silver ore, and its etymology can be traced back to a Spanish word for posterity. The show followed the adventures of the Cartwright family, which was headed by the three-time widowed father Ben Cartwright, played by Lauren Green, and his three sons and their respective wives. Bonanza was considered to be a pretty atypical western at the time, as the bulk of its plot lines had less to do with the range itself and more about Ben and his family and how they cared for each other, their neighbors, and justice. 1967 The Andy Griffith Show 
This show ran for eight seasons, consisting of 249 episodes between 1960 and 68. The series focused on the widowed sheriff of Mayberry, North Carolina, Andy Taylor, and various other members of the community, including bumbling deputy Barney Fife, played by Don Knotts, Andy's sweet-as-apple-pie Aunt B, played by Francis Bavier, and his young son Opie, played by Ron Howard. The show might have been set in a contemporary setting, but it had a wonderfully nostalgic feel that harkened back to the 30s. Watching The Andy Griffith Show made you feel like you'd stepped into a time machine and transported into a simpler time. It never slipped below 7th in the Nielsen ratings throughout its run, but for its final season, it managed to hold the number one spot. After the eighth season, Griffith left the series, and it was reworked as a new series called Mayberry RFD. That show went on to run for 78 episodes before ending in 1971. 1968 to 69, Rowan and Martin's Laughing. Here we have a sketch comedy program that laid the groundwork for many other sketch comedy programs to come. It ran for 140 episodes between 1968 and 73 and was hosted by comedians Dan Rowan and Dick Martin. The title of the program was a play on the hippie love-ins and be-ins that were trending during that time. The show featured a series of rapid-fire sketches and gags, most of which were politically poignant and sexually charged. What audiences got with Rowan and Martin's laugh-in was boldly new and fresh. The series wasn't afraid to push the boundaries of what was previously deemed unacceptable on TV. The world was in a state of flux, with the counterculture movement of the day serving as a catalyst for many social and cultural changes. Some found the subject material and humor to be offensive while others ate it up. Because of this polarizing effect, the program received quite a lot of attention and enjoyed two solid years of being the number one most watched show in America. Rowan and Martin had previously established the act performing in nightclubs where they would respectively play an exasperated straight man and dumb guy. They brought this routine to the show, which proved wildly popular. Other cast members included Gary Owens, Ruth Buzzy, Judy Karn, and Henry Gibson. Each episode would include recurring sketches and start with a series of short skits that served as a cold open something SNL did later as well. Some of the most popular recurring sketches included Socket to Me, in which Judy Karn was tricked into saying a phrase that would result in her falling through a trap door, being splashed with water, or humorously accosted in some manner. The Joke Wall was a segment that ran towards the end of each episode. In it, the cast and guest stars would peek their heads out of doors in a psychedelically decorated wall to exchange witty one-liners. Now it's time to hear from you. What was your favorite show of the 1960s? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.